Welcome. No, you're a pet maxi. Oh, hello Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Now I've been doing way too much stuff recently, making mini computers. So let's make another! You see, recently, Lorenzo Herrera released this incredible, extremely cute build for a fully working Commodore PET Mini. So I've teamed up with YouTube channel Operation 8-Bit to bring you a quick build of that machine. By the way, don't confuse the PET Mini with the equally cool Mini PET. It's a lovely PET compatible PCB kit. You'll be seeing more about that in a video soon from the 9-Bit guy. Now, I'm not sure what PCB stands for, but the 1977 PET was named after the PET rock craze and then backronymed to Personal Electronic Tractor. <laughs> Sorry, Transactor. And it was pretty much Commodore's first foray out of calculators and into fully integrated computers. And if you think that angular design still looks futuristic even today, or at least like something out of 2001 A Space Odyssey, did you know the PET logo and its keyboard and the HAL 9000 interface from that movie actually used the same font. Micro grammar. Maybe because one's a micro and HAL had good grammar? I don't know. But it might explain why Commodore called their first model the PET 2001. Yep, you can't make this stuff up. And you may also not know that the PET only existed because Commodore turned down Steve Jobs and Woz's Apple II prototype and instead tasked the inventor of the 6502 processor late great Chuck Peddle with building their own competing machine. And so, rather fittingly, the PET Mini was launched in memory of Chuck Peddle, pictured here with serial number one of that little machine. Now, along with the 6502 processor, the original PET featured a whopping eight kilobytes of RAM, a gorgeous monochrome display, and a stunning graphics resolution of at least 40 by 25, plus a supersonic 1500 board data set, and of course, that infamously problematic chiclet keyboard. Yeah, it also featured Microsoft's 6502 Basic, which actually nearly drove Microsoft into receivership due to a six month launch delay in Commodore paying them. Yeah, you see, back in the 70s, it was Commodore calling the shots over Jobs, Woz, and Gates. Ah, how the turntables have turned. Anyway, the pet went on to sell well over 100,000 units, sporting several improved models was eventually superseded by the VIC-20 and something called a Commodore 64. But let's not talk about the Commodore PET smartphone, a generic phone with a Commodore logo slapped on it. Can't even think of two good reasons to get one. Yeah, I think we can do better than that. But first, occasionally we feature integrations to help the channel continue, and today's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends! The game is free to play and is cross-device for Android, iOS, PC, but strangely not C64. In the game, you gather a group of champions, seek out the baddies, and beat the devil out of them. Wait, was that blonde lady Fractic? Well, I better be careful, she's feisty. Now for me, the fun part is when you break up in these mystery shards, and it pulls a new champion kicking and screaming out of the afterlife. Wait, that really does look like Blondie Fractic. Anyway, there's tons of game modes, including this arena for player versus player combat. Come on, Lady Fractic. Oh no! Well, at least there's daily rewards that will give you free energy refills, silver and gems, and new updates bring champion fragments which let you summon awesome champions with a special event running right now to get the amazing Horde in. There's also a new bazaar to get high value items with the gold bars you win in Tag Arena. And for new players using the link in the description, you'll also get 100,000 silver, two plan boss keys, and 10 mystery shards, not to mention the Slasher. And all this treasure will be waiting for you right here for 30 days only. And now, from Shadow Legends, let's get started with our mini legend. So here's our recipe ingredients. And by the way, you can find links to the full recipe in the description below. But yeah, we've got a Raspberry Pi, power supply, heat sinks, a screen, GPIO cables, a piezo speaker, switches, mounts, and magnets. Ah, oh, how attractive. But first, first, we need something to put them in. Here's Lorenzo's model fired up in Fusion 360. Let's take a look at all of its parts. Mm. These are our hinge holes. This is where the magnets go to snap the case closed. Here's our Raspberry Pi and the rest of the case, including the screen mount and power plug and switch. So let's start sending all our mini parts from Fusion 360 into Ultimaker Cura for 3D printing. There's the base and the main body, the screen shell, and even a teeny little keyboard. 
Oh. But of course you can't type on it, so make sure you have a Bluetooth or a USB keyboard to use instead. So now we'll 3D print some of the parts in different colors to minimize painting. But that said, watching this can be like watching paint dry. So let's speed things up a tad. Well, 20 tads. All right, not bad. But there are some layer lines from the 3D printing. So on this occasion, and as this is an otherwise very quick project, we've got a bit of time to smooth those out with a mouse sander. Babe, I think we forgot to bring the mini pet with us. Oh, she's in the back. Oh. And rather than actually watching paint dry, let's use this time to download and install RetroPie onto the Raspberry Pi's SD card. Now I've shown this process in other videos, but to recap briefly, we just flash the RetroPie image that we downloaded to the SD card, plug the Pi in, and SSH into the Pi from the terminal, basically networking in to issue a few commands. So let's go ahead and copy Vice to the Pi. Yep, you see Vice emulates multiple machines, not just the Commodore 64, but the PET 2. Not the PET 2, the, all the PETs. Now RetroPie is designed really for booting game images, but it doesn't easily allow you to boot into BASIC without game ROMs in the right folders. Yeah, pretty basic, huh? But we can work around that by turning BASIC into a sort of game ROM of its own, by saving a machine state image just after we get into BASIC the hard way. All right, let's test it out. Let's try a quick test via the HDMI cable. Oh no, it's downside up. Bottoms up? Oh, it's okay, that's an easy fix. But because this is a touchscreen display, and for a few other reasons, we have to connect up the GPIO socket using these cables. So now let's solder the speaker to the audio PCB. And speaking of piezos and PCBs, I bet you didn't know that I recommend PCB Way. Check out their sixth anniversary deals right now, because as we all know, PCB stands for potato chip boards. Well, you are chip dippers, aren't you? Anyway, now we've got all our parts, we're gonna follow the fantastic assembly instructions provided on the Commodore Mini Pet website. Lorenzo really has done a great job of pulling all this together.
just one more thing to screw, the switch and the USB extender for the back of the pet mini case. And then we just pop our HDMI cable in, followed by a couple of final touches. Lorenzo kindly provides a choice of front panel labels, depending on what model you want your pet to be. And of course, a high voltage warning label for the back, just like the real pet. And last but not least, the serial number sticker. This is pet mini number 13. Unlucky for some, but I'm feeling lucky. So let's see what a finished pet mini looks like. But does ours work? It's alive! Okay. It's alive! Now, before we play with our pet, it's worth mentioning a couple of optional extras. First, you could make the pet portable with this battery hookup. Or follow Matthias Progel's design for a pet-inspired gaming keypad. Absolutely keylicious. Now this is Retro Recipes, which means not just terrible dad jokes, but also... Now about a nice game of chess. Great, losing a chest to a computer that's one step above a pocket calculator. <sighs> well, for a tiny computer that invades so little of your space, let's try Space Invaders! Bloody aliens. But of course, the main use of the real pet was for business and productivity. So I think it's story time. Yeah, well, you get the idea with that. And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed this mini build. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to read The Real Pets, a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, support below, and cheerio. Oh. <sighs>